bias variance okay so i'll explain what that is this is just a very preliminary introduction in this class and later on as we uh, progress we'll come back to this at uh, other points okay so let's start off with the assumption that and in many cases i'll be looking at regression because it's easier to write but you can similar uh, concepts you can also have for classification okay so i'm going to assume that your uh, actual data is being generated by a system of this form right so there is a function f right which is what you are trying to learn about but the data that is given to you the y's that are given to you are actually corrupted by some kind of noise okay right so if you remember last class at least the last class i was teaching uh, we were talking about a joint distribution over y and x correct so i said there is some joint distribution over y and x you don't know what the joint distribution is you are only given samples drawn from that distribution okay here we are making a specific assumption about the form of the joint distribution i am assuming that there is some kind of an underlying deterministic function f okay which is operating on my input x but then it's corrupted by some stochastic noise which we will call epsilon okay and that gives me the joint distribution over x and y okay so this process together gives me the joint distribution over x and y and we are going to assume that expected value of epsilon is 0 variance of epsilon is some sigma squared okay so the expected prediction error at some point x dot right is essentially the Right. so we we knew what the expected prediction error was right so that was y minus f of x whole squared but at the point x not i'm just conditioning on x not and this is my prediction error right so it turns out that i can rewrite this expectation as a sum of three terms okay so what are the three terms the first term so the first term is essentially the error that i am going to see right by looking at the estimate that i'll get from a specific data instance okay from the estimate that i'll get as an expectation over the entire training uh, the sample from which the training data is being drawn okay so if i build the classifier multiple times if i build the classifier f hat multiple times okay so this is the expected output that i'm going to get for f not x not right and this is the output i'm getting for this specific instance of data that i have okay so that is one component of the error okay the other component is okay look at the expected prediction i'll make for x not okay taken over multiple training instances what is the expected prediction i'll make for x not and what is the expected output i'm going to get true output i'm going to get right what is the expected true output i'll get right 
it is expectation of y and what will be the expectation of y? In this case it is f of x naught and then there is a underlying error sigma squared that just comes from the fact that I have a variance of sigma squared in my, if I am going to make any single prediction okay, even if I am going to give you the output as f of x okay, even if my output is f of x there will be an expected error of sigma squared because my y has that noise in it okay. does it make sense. So this term is typically called the So this is this term is typically called the variance of the estimator f hat. Okay, this term is called the bias. This term is called the bias of the estimator f hat. So one way to think about it is the following, right? So f is my true function. Right? So regardless of how much ever data I am getting, whatever data I get, right? Regardless of whatever data I get, right? I expect to make at least this much error from the true function f okay so that is the bias okay and the variance is essentially given a specific instance of the training data okay so what is the expected error i am going to make right so this is the bias this is the variance and that what about that part that's hopeless okay i mean regardless of how powerful your classifier is you can't get rid of that sigma squared because that's the inherent noise in the data okay so so that that's nothing you can do about it okay so now by choosing your classifier appropriately okay you can trade off between the bias and the variance okay so i'll just for simple simplicity sake i'll take the example of our k nearest neighbor classifier so all of you know about knns right so it's very easy to talk about bias and variance in knns um right so let's look at this so what do you think this variance term will be for the knn case essentially i am looking at a prediction i am making over many many instances right and the specific prediction i make for one training set right so what would that be if you know if you think about it uh, the prediction i am making is essentially just the mean of k numbers right so what will be the variance of that prediction from many many different samples drawn it will be the, the base variance divided by the number of samples you should have seen that in probability theory course okay if you have not okay i have a later i'll be doing a session on uh, statistics okay and a little bit on hypothesis testing and so on and so forth at that point we'll go back and look at it but just uh, this is the basic setup right so i have some distribution right i take samples from it okay as some distribution p i draw samples from that distribution p and i try to estimate the mean and variance of that of that distribution through those samples okay so now the variance of the estimates of the mean made from this uh, samples is essentially given by the variance of the underlying distribution divided by the number of samples which you are drawing every time okay so this this assumes that you have drawn the k samples many 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 times and you have made an estimate of what the mean will be right and this is the specific estimate of that mean this is essentially the variance of that estimate right so that this is the sigma squared by k Now what about this? <coughs> so this term, right? So this is essentially my expected prediction. This I mean there should be an expectation here over 
the training data So this is the expected prediction I am going to make, right? So I am going to take the all the the k nearest neighbors of a data point, right? Take the average of that. That will be the prediction I am making. So this is the prediction that I am going to make, right? And this is the the expected value of y that we have plugged in here, which is f of x naught, right? Okay, now let us try and look at this. What happens when I change my k? right if i increase my k what will happen to the variance it will decrease or increase decrease what will happen to the bias that's an interesting question if I increase my k what will happen to the bias huh? increase why? It's a Sorry? It's a subtraction. Louder, please. They are subtracting from it. It's not just the subtractive part, right? So, if I increase k, essentially what is going to happen is I am going to start pulling in data points at farther and farther from x0, right? I will be pulling in data points farther and farther from x0. Therefore, my estimate of f of x0 is going to be an average of a lot of dissimilar data points. So, the error is going to be higher. So, for a fixed dimension increasing k right, is going to essentially pull in data points that are more and more dissimilar than the, the query point. Right? The query point was x0. So, I am going to go farther out and therefore, this will essentially become larger. Okay? So, as k becomes larger, my bias increases in k and n and my variance decreases. Variance decreases just because I am taking an average of more data points. Right? There is nothing to tell you that the average is correct. It is just that I am telling you that the average will look the same even if I change the training data right? because I am averaging so many data points. Correct? And this part of course, we cannot do anything about that is the irreducible bias. So, what does this tell you? So, last class we had this discussion about increasing k, what does it do? Right? What did we say when k becomes larger? I did not say anything about it becoming more correct or not, I said it will look stable. more stable. Why does it look more stable? Because my variance goes down. Right? So, when I say that classifier is more stable, estimator is more stable because the variance has gone down. And also, if you look at the classification surface that you will get, right? the separation surface that you will get, okay, it will be a lot smoother if k is very large. Right? I, I, I told you when k is 1, you are going to get lot of isolated islands of uh, different classes and so on and so forth. When k, with, for small values of k, you will find that the classification surface is very complex. Right? It is not like a, a linear thing or, or you can predict very complex functions also. Right? It is easy to think of the complexity in terms of the classification surface, but function wise also you can think of very complex functions if k equal to 1. Right? If k is larger and larger, the function has to be smoother and smoother. You cannot have rapid variations in the function. Right, that essentially means that when k becomes larger, your function class becomes simpler. Right? It kind of looks counterintuitive. Right? I am giving you a lot of k, but then your function class typically becomes simpler because it has to have all these smoothness constraints on it. Right? And as k is smaller, then your function class can be larger. So, your, your, uh, your regressor or your classifier is more complex. Okay, if k is smaller and it is less complex if k is larger and in general that is the case that if your classifier is more complex, your variance will be higher, your bias will be lower. Okay? And if your classifier is less complex, your bias will be higher and your variance will be lower. Okay? So, this is usually the case. Okay? And this also lets us understand why k-means does not perform that well in high dimensions. Why is that? Huh? One small. Sorry? One parameter gets changed a lot. <coughs> yeah, no, no, see, this is even simpler than that, right? So, take the bias term, right? So, even for low values of k, right? So, if you take a very, very high dimensional data, you can with a little bit of analysis show that the, 
the with very high probability the nearest neighbors will be far away from the any any query point you can take any query point right and draw a ball around it the ball is more likely to be empty than filled okay so uh, so for I mean, the, the radius of the ball depends on the dimension it becomes larger and larger as the p becomes larger okay and so essentially it means that even for small values the bias will be high even for small k the bias will be high because the expected distance to the nearest point will be larger in a high dimensional space okay so not only will the variance be high because you have small k even the bias will be high and obviously increasing k is not helping you in that case okay so this is just a pretty a uh, rudimentary discussion on bias and variance uh, at the trade off uh, but i just wanted to uh, give you a feel of that and you have to keep this in mind later on as we are looking at every classifier that we'll see right uh, and uh, specifically now we are going to go into linear regression right so what about bias and variance in linear regression does linear regression have any bias must be right seems to be a very simple classifier okay um uh, we'll talk about that later but the point is yes so you have to any classifier that you are going to be building or thinking about in the future right you have to start thinking about okay what is the bias what is the variance okay is it the, is it appropriate to use this classifier in this setting right and uh, and uh, things like that 